In this series, we've been going over the four key steps of getting good imaging. Today, we will do step two. Welcome to Sonar Tech Skills. Join your host, Greg Lipinski, as he travels the world training police, fire, and military professionals in side scan sonar. With nearly two decades of experience in the location, documentation, and recovery of underwater criminal evidence, he is now sharing that knowledge with you. Learn right alongside first responders so you too can master the world of sonar. Step two, step two, frequency, frequency. Well, what is frequency? Let, let's, let's talk about the definition of frequency without even talking about sound. Let's just use the word frequency. What is the definition? There we go. Somebody finally gets it. It's written right there, right? It's written on the screen. Read the screen. Nobody reads the screen. It's how many times something happens in a given period of time. How many times do I have to ask my kids to pick their socks up off the stairs? It's frequency, right? How many times does my wife have to tell me to put my dishes in the dishwasher instead of the sink? There's a frequency, right? So frequency, again, is how many times something happens in a given period of time. So we're going to give you a period of time, one second. Here's the beginning of my second, and here's the end of my second, okay? Now, the frequency that we're going to use is 900 kilohertz. I keep using that because it's my favorite one. It's the kind of the middle between all of them. And 900 kilohertz, instead of thinking about 900 or 900,000 times, which is kilohertz, kilo, um, we're going to talk about just nine, right? Nine big waves within my second, okay? Now, if I switch from 900 kilohertz to 1800 kilohertz, 18 is a bigger number, right? So now we're looking at nine and 18. If I wanted to fit 18 waves instead of nine waves in my box, what has to happen to the wave? The second's not going to get bigger, right? So how am I going to fit 18 in that same box? What happens to the wave? Shorter. Shorter. Smaller. smaller. The wave has to be smaller. Has to be twice as small, right? To be able to fit the same amount of waves in the same box. So that's how frequency works. The higher the number, the smaller the wave. The lower the number, the bigger the wave. Why does that matter? Right? Why does it matter about bigger, small waves? I've got a video here that you can try at home, right? All this is is an iPhone inside a guitar. Sorry, Android people, it won't work for you, right? Put an iPhone in a guitar, hit record, have somebody strumming on it, and you can actually see the frequency wave of each of those strings. Now, we all know that the big fat string at the top is our what? Our low frequency. The little skinny string at the bottom, that's our high frequency. And so as, you, as he strums this, hopefully the audio and all works when we play this video, but as he strums it, you're going to be able to see the low frequency is going to be a big wave, and as we get higher, the waves are going to get smaller. Now, there's other stuff that's going on with that that we're going to talk about in a second, but the first time I play it, I want you to see that low frequencies have a big wave and high frequencies are a small wave. Now, again... Low frequency, big wave. He's gonna start strumming at the top, he's gonna to go from the top, and as he moves down, we're gonna progressively get smaller in our wave. Everybody catch that? What else happened there? Who's observant? Come on, you're all, well, a lot of you are cops. Well, I mean, there's some firefighters, y'all don't have to be observant. Cops need to be observant. What else was going on with those waves? I'll play it again while you're talking. They Go ahead. Have, they lasted longer than the shorter version. Lasted longer than the shorter version. So the bigger wave, the lower frequency, lasted longer than the shorter wave. Now we're going to watch this. Watch when he strums that. How long is this going to go on? Now when he strums this one, it ends, and that one's still going. So our low frequency lasts longer than our high frequency. What, what does that tell us? What does that mean? That means we get longer ranges. Our bubble that we were talking about at the beginning of class is bigger. So if it is bigger, that means we can travel further in the water and have the water absorb more of that energy. That means we're allowed to go further in the water with a low frequency. 
bigger, much bigger ranges. Okay? So if we have big ranges, long ranges, why don't we just use low frequency all the time? It gives us a long range. We can see a lot bigger area in the water. Less passes back and forth with a low frequency. Why don't I use low frequency all the time? What's that? Less detail. Less detail. Anybody else? I mean, he nailed it pretty much. Just a different word I'm looking for. Resolution. We get lower resolution with low frequency. Higher the frequency, the higher the resolution. Well, what does resolution even mean? It means our ability to resolve an object. Hang on, I gotta get some props. I was wondering, they kept moving my chairs this morning. I kept putting two chairs there, next thing I know, they moved them. I put them there for a reason. All right, so we have my two rocks. These are my two rocks on the uh, seafloor. As I'm passing with a low frequency, these two rocks are going to look like one rock. Why? Because the wave is too big and it can't fit between them. So here's my low frequency wave, right? And as I'm coming forward, I hit the rock and I bounce back. I can't fit between. Okay, so my image will be one rock mm -hmm. on my screen. I won't see two because I can't resolve the difference between the two. So if I reduce my wavelength, raising my frequency to here, I still can't fit through, right? It's not until my wave is small enough to fit between the two rocks that I'm able to resolve the difference between the two. Make sense? Same thing happens with, I don't know, any detail on your object. The wave, if the wave isn't small enough to fit in it, then it can't resolve the difference and therefore you can't see the clarity. If I want to see a body, for example, I need to be above 480 kilohertz. Why? Because that wave needs to be able to fit between the arm and my body. So if you are below 400 or 500, right around there, you're not going to be able to resolve the difference between an arm and the body. You'll just see a blob. Okay? Counts it all as one rock. Okay? Now, when I get to, I don't know, 600 kilohertz, 600 kilohertz, I can see the difference between the body and the leg and the head and all of that but I'm not seeing any other details. So if you're at around 600 kilohertz, you're gonna see a stick figure, pretty bright stick figure, okay? Got plenty of images of those. Now you're gonna raise up a little bit more to, I don't know, say 900 kilohertz. At 900 kilohertz, you can start seeing the clothing, backpack, jacket, shoes, right? Why? Because you can start seeing those smaller features on the body. But it's not until about 1800 kilohertz that your mitten becomes a hand because at 1800 kilohertz, the wave can fit between the fingers. And so we can start seeing smaller things. Now, even 1800 is very difficult to see actual fingers. So you gotta be very uh, experienced with it to get that kind of detail. Also, you need 1800 kilohertz to see things like handguns, okay? Anything below 1800 kilohertz, you'll see a rock and it'll have some gun shaped look to it, but you're not going to actually see the gun itself until you get pretty high in that frequency. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So what does that mean for you? It means one, you need to know what frequency you're using. So out of everybody who raised their hand earlier, said they had a side scan sonar, people tell me what their, or what their frequencies are. 450. You got single frequency 450. 900. 900 single. You all have 918, right? Anybody have a system and they have no idea what the frequency is? It's okay to raise your hand because usually 80% of people have no clue. They just know it works when they turn it on, right? So you need to figure out what frequency you have and then figure out what that frequency can see to see whether or not you're actually going to be able to make out the target that you're looking for, okay? Because if you got 480, 480 for example, you can find a car, you can find a truck, you can find a semi, you know, things like that. 
Body recovery is probably not going to be it for a 480. 600 and up, absolutely, right? And then when you're getting into criminal side of things, criminal forensic side of things, you need to start getting progressively higher frequencies. Does that make sense? So you have to understand how the frequency works, right? Size of the frequency matters. And then you need to understand what frequency you have versus what you're actually looking for. What is your mission, right? So this goes all the way back to the purchase of the sonar. You know what your mission is going to be before you buy it, right? You're on a police department or fire department. You're going to be finding bodies, cars, small planes, boats, right? So you need a frequency that can actually see and find those things, okay? So before you buy, figure out what you're going to find and then purchase based on that. Does that make sense? All right, so that was step two. What was step one? Target. 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 Step two? Frequency. Frequency. All right, so this is a different view of how that works. So I kind of explained it here, and then I kind of explained it a different way. Right? Here's our big low frequency. It cannot fit between the rocks, hence the little red arrow. Right? And so it goes and it hits and it looks like one rock as it returns. If we have little tiny waves, they can fit between the rock. And so we can distinguish between the two and I'm able to resolve those rocks. You may go over this here shortly, but what about the range? We deal with different water depth all the time. So it's, okay. Okay. That's step three and four. We're getting there, man. We're this close. This close. This close. 